As a heavily mechanics focused and early game focused champion, Lee Sin is one of the best champions in the game to invest your time into. Welcome to the ultimate guide to Lee Sin in Season 11. Here's a quick breakdown of how we'll be going over the video. I'll touch on general concepts of Lee Sin's purpose as a champion and what success looks like in games that you're doing well on him. We'll then discuss different components of his kit and how we can work better to optimize each one of these. This includes going over different jungle matchups, rune optimizations, ability maxing, your build, pathing, how to play out ganks, and how to play out each phase of the game. But first, if you haven't yet, please subscribe for more content like this. It's free and you can always unsub if you want later as well. Starting off with runes, while some players make different pages sometimes, the strongest and most well-rounded page for Lee right now is by far Conqueror. The early amount of attack damage that the Keystone provides works incredibly well with Lee's insanely high AD scalings, allowing him to win a lot of fights given enough time to thrive. For the rest of the Precision Tree, Taking Triumph, Legend Tenacity or Alacrity depending on the enemy comp, and Last Stand are going to round you out. These runes are very standard for not just Lee Sin, but a lot of different skirmish focused champions in the game right now. Into comms with a lot of CC, Legend Tenacity is going to be the better third row choice, but if that's not the case, then Legend Alacrity will help you a ton in your early clears. For your secondary tree, the most common and most flexible choice is to opt into Inspiration with Cosmic Insight and Free Boots, because since the reduced smite cooldown and boots are useful in pretty much every scenario you could think of. Some players have opted for a Sorcery Tech with Transcendence or Water Walking, or even a Snowball build with Sudden Impact and Eyeball Collection, but the Inspiration secondary take is my recommendation here. For rune stats, Lee Sin can take the standard attack speed, adaptive force, and armor combo in most games, while being able to replace the armor rune with an MR rune if he's placing an AP champion. Now on to build. Lee Sin's an interesting champion in his builds because we've seen some pretty insane variety and creativity come from different players who tried to play him. There's been builds ranging from insane lethality one-shot builds to these incredibly interesting support type builds focused on being able to peel for your backline carries. But I'll explain the potential strengths and weaknesses to these builds and why some item choices may be better so you can maximize your effectiveness in-game. For your Mythic, the best item that currently supplements Lee Sin's identity as an AD Bruiser is currently Gore Drinker. With a solid combination of damage, sustain, and tank stats, I'd say Gore Drinker is a really well-rounded option for Lee Sin right now. On top of all the aforementioned stats, Lee Sin also benefits greatly from Gore Drinker's passive granting additional AD as well as the Tiamat active that allows him to greatly improve his clear speed in camps like Chickens where he would usually struggle at. Gore Drinker is an item that's incredibly powerful for Lee Sin in this regard and is what I would consider the best mythic in slot for him. Other similarly decent options include Stridebreaker, which trades the sustain and damage for a touch more mobility, and even something like Prowler's Claw if you're literally trying to 1v9. However, even with both of these items as other choices, I would rate Gordrinker above both of them as Lee's first choice. Outside of this, Lee Sin is extremely flexible in his other item choices, and has multiple ways of building to fill out different roles in a team or to provide more options for himself. Pretty standard items to fill out Lee Sin's second and third item slots are choices like Sterix Gauge, Guardian Angel and Black Cleaver. These are all well-rounded AD Bruiser items that further emphasize that combination of damage and survivability in a fight and allow Lee to thrive in just hopping in and dealing as much damage as he can. One important factor for Lee Sin itemization is to buy enough defensive stats to actually be able to go in and survive to actually serve as a frontliner. This is the main reason why players can't just build full damage Lee Sin because it's actually quite difficult and feels really awkward for him as the game progresses into its later stages. If Lee can't fearlessly go in and create space for his team, or get his insect combos off, he tends to feel pretty useless. So items like Gordon Kerr and all these other bruiser items help a ton in making him a lot more usable in these situations. A slightly more damage focused but still great item on Lee Sin is also Edge of Night. The rationale behind this is to allow Lee to be immune to certain core abilities that prevent him from getting his combo off on priority targets. Edge of Night still happens to give a decent amount of HP and attack damage, so it still ends up complementing his style fairly decently. For boot choices, Lee Sin has always relied on resistance-based boots, so he can maximize his effectiveness and survivability in fights. You can build Merc Treads into CC teams and Steel Caps into teams with a lot of on-hit damage. If the game doesn't really fit the need of either of these options, deciding to go for Lucidity Boots are also a great choice. Moving on to other potential options for items though, Lee Sin can basically build most AD or even tank items depending on what role he needs to fit in the current game. Ideally, you'd want a mix of both in your overall build, but there's nothing wrong in leaning harder into one path or the other, as long as you're not a full tank or a full assassin. 
Bramble Vest and Executioner's Calling are both great options for anti-heal, and you can finish either one of these items depending on the game you're in. Force of Nature and Spear Visage are great choices if you need some MR. Maw of Memorius is also a decent choice, but it does conflict with Steric's Gauge if you end up building that, so that's something to keep in mind. Lee does build some armor already with GA, but if you need more armor, lots of choices like Randwin's Thorn Mail, Dead Man's Plate, and even Death Stance also work really well here. Lee Sin also works well as someone who needs to build Serpent's Fang if you need it, and can even build support items like Nice Foul if you have a target that you really need to protect. The situation of what you need from game to game will vary greatly depending on your team's needs, and as long as you understand what role you need to fill in each situation, you really can't go wrong. Moving on to the matchups. So, Lee Sin is interesting because he, even though he's an early game focused champion, he has a lot of matchups that aren't that easy for him to succeed him. His Q is an extremely easy ability to predict and has a lot of abilities that can counter it. There's also a ton of cases where Lee can get out damaged by other champions. So with so many cases where Lee can just lose his matchups, what makes him able to succeed regardless? Lee Sin players usually have to make up for this innate weakness by making use of his insane mobility and flexibility in order to gain leverage in these unfavorable situations. Where Lee Sin loses in raw capability and stats compared to other champions at times, he can gain that back because he has just such incredible potential thanks to how much he can influence these fights. His insane mobility is also the reason why he can do so well in 2v2 and 3v3 skirmishes as well. Lee Sin is probably the best jungler in the game for getting enabled by other champions, and it's in these situations where he can take on a lot of different mix-ups. With this in mind, let's move on to matchups. Starting with other gank heavy junglers, Lee Sin does not like playing into the likes of Rek'Sai, Zin Zhao, or Elise because these champs are able to counter his Q directly or just stat check him anyway and make it really hard for him to walk up against them sometimes. Against Rek and Elise as well, you need to adjust how you play around your Q. Both of these champions can cancel your Q because of the nature of their kits, so you need to adapt accordingly. Playing really slow in skirmish and holding Q until these champions are forced to not try to counter your Q anymore will be pretty key here. Rek'Sai has to hold her Burrow W in order to stop you, and Elise has to hold her Spider form so she can use her Spider Links to block it as well. Eventually, you can use your other abilities to outvalue them until other team members come or the enemy jungler adapts accordingly. Against certain tanks, Lee Sin also has issues because he just can't get enough damage down to kill them. Udyr, Nunu, Skarner, Gragas, these champs are just all too beefy in the game to for Lee Sin to take down easily. He'll still win extended trades, but this doesn't mean he won't have any trouble. Other than these champs though, Lee Sin can generally thrive against most other junglers provided they don't have any tools to directly counter him. He'll be able to gap close and outdamage a lot of champions in the early game due to the value he gets from Conqueror, and you can use this threat to command space and threat in the early game. Now for combos. Lee Sin is one of those champions who is exposed to an absolutely insane variety of different combos and ability tricks, and is the proud host of some of the sickest plays the game has ever seen. Although you may be tempted to try some of these at yourself, or you may feel that you can't be good at Lee Sin without mastering these combos, but that couldn't really be further than the truth. I won't be teaching you how to be a Chinese Lee Sin one trick with insane combos with Rocket Belt, but I will be showing you some of the most fundamental and core combos that any good Lee Sin player needs as part of their arsenal. The cornerstone to enabling a lot of Lee Sin combos and a prerequisite to every play you make on Lee is your ward jump. If you want to be good and proficient at Lee Sin, you have to be extremely comfortable on ward jumping. Having your ward jump become second nature to you will be very helpful in making you feel that much more nimble and flexible when you're playing the champion, so definitely spend some time in the practice tool to get comfy on it. One thing to make it easier to understand is that if you're in range to drop a ward, you're also in range to use your W. Lee Sin's W actually has a bigger range than your trinket or pink wards when you place those, so if you just hold the same spot, then find a button that you can press with your W easily, that'll be the key to maintaining the consistency with the jumps. With me, I use Trinket on 4, and I always place my Vision Wards on 3. I find these the best ways for me to Ward Jump, but definitely adapt these binds to your own playstyle and preferences. The next combo is of course a classic Insect that we've seen so many times in pro play. This is always a really satisfying combo to land when you get the right target, and it takes a lot of comfort and understanding of Lee Sin's windows to get right. The combo of course starts off with you hitting your Q and following up on it, and then Ward Jumping behind your opponent and then ulting them into your team. Although this combo is pretty cool, it is not the only way that Lee Sin can engage, and you should always take an easier and more consistent route if you can help it. Playing Lee is not about just egoing on the opponent and showing them how many IQ points you have, it's about taking his relatively difficult to execute kit and playing him in a way that allows his tools to be as consistent as possible. One thing to add some mix-ups to your combos is the R flash interaction. If you use Dragon's Rage before flashing, it saves the animation time and makes it really hard for your opponents to react. This lets you usually get away with a quick gank that gets your target 
targets towards your teammate, which usually makes it incredibly difficult for them to react or try to survive. By adding all of these together, there are now different mix of combos that we can now access as well. Rather than thinking that you have to go for a specific combo at the right time, you can consider feeling it out as you're approaching a certain situation and adapting based on what your champion can do at that time. Sometimes hitting Q on Lee Sin in teamfights doesn't actually mean that you can commit to it because it's a fairly predictable ability and the enemy team could find multiple ways to play around it, whether it's via CC or other protective tools. That's why there are certain situations where using your W to lead a fight or skirmish may be better. Instead of trying to hit a Q, you could throw your enemy off by dashing in immediately, kicking them, and hitting your Q off of the knockback. One thing to note is that since Lee Sin's ultimate is guaranteed to launch an enemy in a straight line or against a wall, it's typically fairly easy to land your Q during that period of inability. You can even lead your combos with kick sometimes if you want to aim for a different target, or use a target you kicked in order to gain some AoE damage off. There's also the ladder insect, where Lee can queue to one target but fly to that target only to use them as a stepping stone to flash kick another target. There's an insane amount of depth and variation to Lee Sin combos, and I'll leave a specific combo video down in the description, but I think it's more important and practical to understand each component of a combo that Lee Sin is capable of, and using that knowledge and comfort to each component to then create your own combos based on the situation. Now let's talk about pathing. Lee Sin is a very high tempo, fast paced jungler who wants to take every opportunity to fight that he can get. With that in mind, his clears are generally very gank centric in contrast to what the season 11 meta has called for so far. In spite of this, Lee is definitely in a very good spot at the moment since they recently nerfed the heavy firing base playstyle that was usually good. Lee Sin can start either side of the map, but the more important thing to keep in mind is how you're clearing. Lee can immediately gank at level 3, so you can adjust your pathing based on where you start and where you need to go. A default clear would then to be start on one buff, clear gromp, and then do your other buff and then gank a nearby lane depending on where you want to be. Keep an eye on your laner's wave states while you're clearing as well, either by using your F keys or with your mouse so you can understand whether your gank is going to work out and whether you need to adjust your pathing accordingly. One thing a lot of people tend to struggle with when playing these gank heavy junglers is not identifying when enemy laners are not providing windows of opportunity for you to get in and actually gank when you're there, so you simply have to look for an alternative to opt for until you can find that angle. This could translate into having to farm another camp in addition to your standard 3 camp clear because of this, or this could mean an opportunity to invade the enemy jungler because your top or mid laner has prio. This could even mean opting for something like a level 2 gank really early on if an enemy laner is really overextended. There's a lot of possibilities here for a jungler like Lee Sin to mix up the recipe to success in the game, and I think identifying your opportunities and understanding where you're needed the most will be crucial to maximizing your chances of success. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about Lee Sin to newer players is how to gank with him. Learning to gank on Lee Sin will serve as a great baseline for ganking in general and helps you understand why proper ganks need steps in order to be taken in order to get the results. The core concept behind this is that in order to maximize the success rate of your ganks, you need to save your most important gap closers until the last second so that you can make the enemy burn theirs. The rationale behind this is to develop as much threat and deal as much damage in a gank as possible before having to burn your final abilities, which gives you the highest chance of keeping up with the enemy in your ganks, burning summoner spells, and granting kills. For Lee Sin specifically, this means not starting off ganks with Q. It sounds counterintuitive because Lee Sin's Q does allow you to start off a gank rather quickly and close the gap against the enemy laner, but it is not what you want to be doing. It's optimal to actually be using Lee Sin's Q last here and for a couple of reasons. The first one being that the enemy laner is very likely to be burning all of their mobility spells early on in the gank to try and escape, meaning that saving Q for last will make it easier to hit without them. Lee Sin Q is also hard to flash away from if you already hit it, so it's very helpful in that regard. If you were to use it first, the success of your gank is entirely reliant on hitting a Hail Mary skill shot, which is not consistent at all. Save your Q and either use it your other spells to gap close and make it easier to land the Q, or rely on your teammates' CC tools in order to get it off properly. Ganking lanes that have high amounts of lockdown make Lee Sin's job a lot easier as well. Now let's move on to his mid to late game teamfights. Lee Sin's role in a teamfight can vary drastically from game to game, mainly because of his high mobility and flexibility. Although it may be tempting to just want to jump in on the closest target and blow them up with your combo, we need to understand when the right time to do that is and if that actually matches up with your team's win condition in a fight. 
Usually though, sneaking your way into the enemy backline and pushing an immobile enemy carry into your team is a good way to get a fight started as that allows your team to focus on the exact right target and set the center of their damage. Getting good kick combos can be the bread and butter to your team fighting potential, so being able to land a Q, follow up on it, and make it to the enemy backline relatively undisturbed is generally good practice. If you're against a team that has a lot of assassins or you generally have squishy out targets on your team that need to be protected, it can be at times Lee Sin's job to actually fend against this. As much as Dragon's Rage is an excellent engage tool, it can also be a great disengage tool for the same reason. Being able to push away the enemy backline divers and create space for your carries to have more uptime on their damage will pay huge dividends if you manage to keep them alive. Your shield and slow will also make you a big body that won't allow enemy divers to get into your team. Playing front to back on Lee is probably the only thing you don't want to be doing as his damage is not effective when fighting against other bruisers. Of course you'll be able to fend your own in the fight, but you need to make sure you're having an impact and trying to make game winning plays because that's the mentality you need to have when playing this champ. You've got incredible tools that let you feel like you can do anything as long as you're good enough, so it's our job as the Lee Sin player to get the maximum use out of our game knowledge and allow ourselves to take advantage of that. It's for this reason that Lee Sin by nature will always have a place in the solo queue meta, no matter how good or bad he is in general. If you're capable enough and have a deep understanding of the champion, he can always have a big impact and create opportunities where other junglers cannot. As always though, hope this guide helped all of you out and I will see you in the next one. Stay fresh.